Claire Bomstra, co-founder of Layer, the industry-leading application for mobile augmented reality, and listed as one of the most influential women in technology. Claire is now developing an educational system preparing children for future challenges. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Claire Bouchter. Paradigm shifts outside of the box thinking and acting. 21st December 2012, the end of the world or the start of a new era. Lots of mumbo jumbo that has been thrown at you. You may have already been tired for it, but it does summarize my journey over the past three and a half years. And I would like to share with you this, this journey. And let me start with my company that I co-founded three and a half years ago, ago called Layer. You may remember Layer from the app you could use to hold up your phone, look around you to see houses for sale nearby. You can still do that with Layer, but today you can also make print media interactive with digital content. If you don't know what it is, well, let me show you a little bit how it works. This is an example of a magazine that has been made interactive with digital content, such as uh, videos, uh, live Twitter feeds, uh, other links to digital content. Um, here on the back, for example, is a nice ad for a vodka. And it says, view more with layer. Well, let's do that. I take my mobile phone, an iPhone, an Android device, or for example, an iPad in this case, and I uh, start up the layer app, L-A-Y-A-R, here you see it. I open the app, and it starts a live video feed. I'm pointing at you in the audience right now. If you can see what I see, please wave. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so let me point this at the magazine. So I hold the phone in front of it. I tap the screen, which starts a recognition. We match it with our database to figure out whether we have something in there. And oh, yeah, there we have. So you see a digital layer on top of the magazine. I can, for example, click the Add to Cart to directly put this in my shopping basket and to direct, directly buy this bottle of vodka. But there's more in this magazine. For example, on this page, there's a live Twitter stream on the hashtag of Layer. Let's see how that looks like. So, it's loading now. Let's see how the Wi-Fi works has been really quick and a little bit slow. There you go. Tweets about hashtag layer. And there you are. People tweeting about layer via hashtag layer. So this is a live widget. But you can also make pages come to life. The cover, for example, this is my co-founder, Rymo. You want to hear him talk? So let's point at the page again. Hi, I'm Rymo, CEO of Layer, and this it's interactive print. Magical, isn't it? So let me explain what just happened. The moment you pointed your phone at this page, we started analyzing it for its unique characteristics. Unique characteristics like my face or like this doll. So you can try this yourself. You can order this magazine uh, on our website. Um, it's really easy. So it's end of the live demo right now. Um, it's pretty easy to make your own print media interactive with digital content. Over 30,000 publishers across the globe have already done that. And also here in the Netherlands, you can see uh, a lot of magazines or billboards or brochures which have been made interactive. The app already sits on 27 million phones in 209 countries. And um, we also have a business model right now, which was for me a moment that I felt that the company is in good hands with a new leadership team. because. This guy is also not the CEO anymore. We hired a really um, experienced CEO. And I'm now doing something else. <laughs> Sorry, OK, sorry, Raimo. A, a managerial CEO who has a lot of experience in a publishing business, because that's a new business for us. It's good you started to laugh there. So uh, three months ago, I announced on the stage at TED that I'm now doing something completely different. And uh, I want to talk to you about that as well. And I'm going to start with a little personal story. And I need the clicker for that. <laughs> so 
It's not so very long ago that I realized that I have always been obsessed with status. All my life I've been trying to climb up the status ladder. Up and up and up and up. Because this is actually how we define success in society, right? Have to go up and up and up. But it was only when I got to speak at the highest of the highest in status, the World Economic Forum in Davos, the yearly gathering of the world's leaders. I got to be there, and I thought, wow, this is going to be it. But I realized that having a lot of status does not necessarily, is not necessarily correlated to the, what you contribute to society, to the world. And it was a bit of a disappointment. And it took me also a couple of years to figure out that what, what, what I was really looking for, but was searching in the wrong place, is actually value. People who have value, people who are valuable, are people who care, who help, who create, who make, who develop, who research, who fix, who make something beautiful, who take responsibility, who lead, who who can put a smile in your face. It's actually all verbs. People who have value, people who are valuable, use themselves as a tool to make things better. Now, let's take a minute here. Close your eyes, please, for a moment. And think of the people who have value in your life or in your company. Close your eyes. Just think about it. So, is it the crazy project manager? Is it the priceless secretary? Is it maybe the person who tells you that you really need a holiday, who asks you how your children are doing? And then match that with the stripes, with their status, with their titles. Are they the same? Maybe not. So, at deep inside we know what value is, but we don't always value it because we mainly value status. How does it work, actually? Why are we doing it? Well, this is a typical org chart, organization chart. You know that all. And there are two things which actually are remarkable to me. First of all, it's the hierarchy. And the only way is up. And this is a mid-sized company, but in big corporates, there are even seven layers which separate me, for example, from the CEO. And the only way is up, but and you also know that there's not much room up there, so where do you go? And the other one is, they're all boxes. And we have our mouths full of thinking and walking and talking outside of the box, but we put you into the box. So this all started in the industrial ages, actually, where we needed a means to get information across, and the top-down was the, the way to do it. But today, with the role of technology, you saw that with also with layer, we know that information just spreads much quicker than any managerial cascade can do. And, and we know that technology and social media and networks, they can get everything, you can get people to work together across teams and business units and even continents. So we don't necessarily need this anymore. And you know this, but you may not know how to solve it, how to do it differently. Well, let me show you a pretty extreme example. It's a company called Valve, V-A-L-V-E. It's a very successful games company uh, from the US originally, and it makes billions, billions, with only 300 people. So if you uh, analysts have been, uh, been calculating, um, Every employee makes an average profit of 87.5 million US dollars per year. That's a lot higher than Google, Apple, or probably also what your companies do. And the funny thing is that in this company, there is no hierarchy, nothing. There are founders, but they are not above, they are just there. That's pretty extreme. And they also realized that, so what they actually did is create a handbook. Handbook Valve, and I can highly recommend you to download this all. Just Google for Handbook Valve, and you can download it. And it's, it's a hilarious handbook, and it shows people who get there at Valve how to figure out how things work, because if you don't have a hierarchy, if you don't have a boss, blah, blah. And uh, the funny thing is that everybody in the company 
has a mandate to take final decisions. Everybody in a company has a mandate to decide what projects should be done, should be worked on, and what projects ship. And they have very funny cartoons to, to explain this. And uh, let me show you one cartoon, for example, here. It says, uh, come up with a bright ID, that's number one. Tell a coworker about it, work on it together, and ship. No management at all. Just think about all the money and energy that can be saved and less, you know, what you can do and how far you can get, get ahead of your competition if you would set up your company like this. So you can't change every company into Valve, at least not overnight. But you can start to see people for who they really are and look at people. So start with that today, tomorrow, when you get back to the office. What I am doing, besides doing speeches such as this, is actually changing education. Um, and the same mechanisms are there, and it's even worse, because we're completely hardwired in our brains for what we think that education is about. Hey, you see uh, tables separated from each other, there's year classes, there are uh, fixed curriculum, there are CETO tests, and there's diplomas, and this is how we think education should look like. But if you think about educating for value, well, you probably have to shift it all around, but that's really scary. So I started a major movement to change, first of all, this perception and also to really change things. And it, I call it Operation Education. And you can find more information by this website. It's, uh, it will be filled very soon and also hashtag Operation Edu. And we'll have a big event on March the 2nd. But before I end, a question also to you. Do you know your own value in life? And did anybody ever ask you? And did you ask yourself? And if not, well, it can be a really interesting journey to figure that out, and it can start today. And I wish you a lot of pleasure and joy on that journey, because it, it will really enrich you, maybe not with money, but with a lot of happiness and a great feeling of value, being valued. And also know that if you're going on this journey, you will really never be alone. Thank you very much.